I think being prepared helps you kind of get in your zone. You know, I'm going to be interviewing Julie Donaldson today and chatting with her. So I was up all night looking at all of her Instagrams, doing all the research on her. I -hmm. found out that she was a reporter in in Boston. And so, of course, I'm from Boston. You need to find those connection points with people. Mm This summer obviously was a big moment for you. You're trying to fuse what you are known to do and then also now this executive role, senior vice president of media. How are you fusing those worlds and not getting completely overwhelmed? There hasn't been anything so far that's been overwhelming, but in all honesty, the the day is, they're long, it's nonstop. I mean, just coming in and redoing the television shows, you know, I, I can do that in my sleep and I was so excited because it's something that I was always close to and did and built my career on is, you know, doing the weekly shows, doing the pre and post game shows for the last 10 years and being in the booth on game day as the first female to do that. And then you throw on top of that the senior vice president role. Um, You know, when I came in here, people were hurting and they hadn't been given the opportunities or the resources or the treatment in order to do their jobs to the best of their abilities. When you're going into an organization that needs a lot of help. How are you prioritizing? Like, are you are you just trying to put out the biggest fire first? Are the fires all out? When I first came in, you know, as the journalist, I was aware of what the article was going to be about. I didn't know the extent across the country, not just sports franchises, but I think every corporation, every business out there has to sit back and take a look now. How are we treating our employees? It's a shame that our franchise had to be one out in their forefront, but I'm glad it has started conversations. We brought in Jason Wright as our team president, and it blows your mind to think that he's the first black team president. Like, well, why hasn't this happened before? You can't tell me there's not plenty of qualified people out there. Jason comes in and says, you know what? A diverse leadership creates better companies. They're more successful. They're healthier because you have different walks of life. You have different shoes and paths that brought you somewhere. So it's really cool to be on the the ground floor of a franchise that's going to turn the direction. Let's just get your thoughts on Andrea Kramer and Hannah Storm for a second. Obviously being first female play-by-play and color broadcast team for Thursday Night Football. You know, we also have Kamala Harris, first woman of black and South Asian descent to be vice president-elect. Representation matters is kind of where I want to go with that. I mean, here's the thing. Why is it such a crazy idea to have a first Hannah Storm? Um, Why is it a crazy idea to have a first female vice president? That's what I want to get past. I mean, I've said it myself and, you know, I even heard this is that, you know, I'm the first, I'm not going to be the last. But if it hasn't been done before, you don't know what can be done. So when it was presented to me, I said, no, I can't do that because it hasn't been done. And so they had to do a really hard job no selling way. me on this. I no, thought you just I, didn't I, want to I, take well, it because it was a hard no. I thought you didn't want to take it because you didn't want to be a puppet and just placed in a role because you were a female. I didn't realize that you just felt like you couldn't see that path because it had never been done. That's cool. Oh yeah. No, it was it's interesting. Was, it was all of it together. And I asked, I said, well then why me? And they said, well, we like you, we respect you, we know that the fan base respects you. You know this team. So we just want you to do your job well, and we want you to do it for us. Obviously, it's been a tough season. What do you think about where you guys are at now and how you're going to finish out the season? I don't think anybody saw the division being the way that it is, but it is a clear opportunity for this franchise to actually learn what it means to win. This win today will go a long way, I believe, in the outlook of this team. And, and I'm behind Ron Rivera. Like, I would not have taken this job if he probably was not the head coach in place. And, and I told him that. I said, it's easy to buy into the vision that you have for this team and um, where you want to take it and the culture you want to create. That's what I'm buying into. And you realize just exactly how good you guys can be. Trust me, fellas, it's in here. It really is. If you talk to the players, they are buying in to what he's telling them and teaching them. And they're finally going like, oh, That's what that was for. So in this moment, we know how to do that and learn and grow from it. It hasn't been the wins yet, but I feel like we're getting closer each game. Hey, Coach. I just wanted to start by asking you what it's like working with Julie. Oh, Julie's right there. Hi, Julie. (laughs) So now that Julie's in front of you, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) don't speak the truth. (laughs) You know, pad it a little bit. No, but... Really, what's it like working with Julie? It's enjoyable because the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. But when you have somebody that's starting out new and they have an enthusiasm for it, um, it's infectious. And you get excited about that. And I think that's important. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, we created 
in doing what we did and in, 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 in hiring Julie is that we got a fresh face, an enthusiastic face that, um, and in fact, she got chastised apparently for being too excited, our home opener against uh, Philadelphia. Looking to the right, runs out of oh, time there again. Go. There's the rookie, Chase Young. The ball yeah, is there. It's loose, it's loose. Philadelphia is able to recover it. We were talking all over the play-by-play. -play. If you were listening to it, you couldn't hear the play-by-play -play because we were yelling and shouting and cheering and a fan of the team. And uh, Twitter totally, totally came at us very harsh. Um, but, you know, here's the thing that Coach always says about his teams. They're young, they're growing. Um, I'm young in this role and I'm growing, so we have improved. Still room to go, though. Jennifer King, can you guys talk a little bit about her hiring? Yes. Look at that smile. Yeah. Right. You know, um, I met Jennifer about four years ago at an NFL symposium. And then when the opportunity came to hire her full time here, I did. I knew she knew the game. And I felt this was the perfect opportunity in a perfect situation. And that's why I hired Jennifer. When I was talking with Coach and one of the very first times, you know, we mentioned Jennifer and he said, I brought her in because she deserved a chance. And he said the same to me. He's like, look, you're here because you do a good job. They, I, I sure as hell hope they didn't hire me just because I'm a female and they needed that. You do the job, you have to hold up to that expectation, yep. that standard of that job. But he said, whatever you need to do to get to where you want to go, we want to help you. And I think that's just cool that coach has that mentality. He's not looking at it female or male. He's looking at it, you're qualified. How can we help you get where you want to go? Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time. And uh, Julie, I will see you Sunday. Coach, good luck. So what is the play-by-play -play before the play-by-play? -by, -play? by this time of the game, I should have everything done. The days are long, the hours are long, the prep is nonstop. But come game day, this is when you're supposed to shine and let it play. You have Bram, myself, and then D'Angelo. The big thing for us is kind of communicating. Mm -hmm. With three people booth, you have to have clear conversation on who's talking when and, mm. and when to interact it so it's a, a clear understanding to those at home. I got the job and I had to hire my crew very quickly. And that was nerve wracking to make sure you get the right guys. When I sat down and I talked to them, I said, y'all have to believe in me because people are gonna be watching mm -hmm. what it's like to have a female be there. They've been great, been absolutely yeah, wonderful yeah. and supportive. <laughs> and so why wouldn't there be more women doing this to begin with? Hello and welcome into the Acronis broadcast booth for today's game against, yes, the Lions. We actually are at FedEx Field, so it gets a little eerie, guys, coming to the stadium and not having the field out there. Really kind of along the storylines of everything in 2020 is the quarterback change. When Coach Ron Rivera said, we got to see what we have in Alex Smith, many people thought he was absolutely crazy. And here we are for the first time in 728 days with Alex Smith being the starter. Julie sounds so good. So refreshing to hear a female call the game. Matt Stafford's always going to be looking for that big play. I like it. I like hearing her. He will always be that quarterback that's going to sit back, hold on to the ball, see if his guys get open, and constantly throw it downfield. You have to know that's what Stafford's going to be looking to do in this game. Detroit leads Washington 24 to 3. They were down 17 points last week when Alex Smith was able to lead them back. Of course, that's the, been the running theme throughout the entire season, though, is having to play from double digits down. This is familiar territory for Washington, unfortunately. But come from behind, kids. All right, guys, they need our support. Wave in three. One, two, three. Hello? Guys, really? We're back in the broadcast booth. Washington is trying to make this a ball game here. No huddle, quick snap. McKissick gets the call and he is in. Yeah. Touchdown, Washington. We waited a long time to be able to say that there is a score in this game. First and goal here, handoff, Gibson to the goal line. Let's see if there's a signal. Yep. Yes, touchdown. Touchdown! Yeah! Wow, hear that echo? <laughs> Seven more to go. We're within a touchdown. I believe in this team right now. We're making a comeback. 6.15 to go. McKissick comes in motion. Handoff Gibson has to avoid a tackler. Gets to the edge. Walks in. Touchdown. Touchdown, Washington. Go, Gibson. This is why they said we will let Adrian Peterson go, because we believe in our young back. We believe he has the capabilities. And there you go, a second touchdown in this game. Man, why do they make it so hard on us, man? <laughs> why do they make it so hard on themselves? It's 24 apiece. 
Touchdown! Don't take that! Okay, let's send him some good energy. They have six seconds left in the game, and they have two timeouts. They have time to run a play and potentially set up a game-winning field goal, and Prater's got a big leg. Yeah, he has not missed today. They have to throw something quick. They do. That's Marvin Jones dives to the 40. My heart's racing, guys. I don't know about you. Three seconds left in the game. They're going to give Prater a chance from about 57 here to win it. And that one curls back. It goes inside the left upright, and the Lions win at the buzzer. The final score, Detroit 30, Washington 27. Seems to be the way the script goes for Washington. Ron Rivera is trying to teach his guys how to win. We can watch here. Alex Smith is clearly frustrated as he gave this team a fighting chance. It's frustrating, I feel like, week in and week out to try and say that these are games that they're in, but not being able to convert on. You know, I mean, at, at the end of the game, this is always one of my favorite things is kind of coming out here and it being pretty much empty oh. and just kind of like letting the game settle in on you. And especially after like a tough loss, it's like, ugh, decompress. As a massive football fan, that was, that was really cool. And getting to see the first female in the booth live in action. It's the league that's going to be looking at this and saying, she's killing it for them. Why aren't we putting someone in the booth in our organization? Heck yeah, there better be a whole bunch of women behind me doing this. But once you see it, you know you can be it. And it's cool when I hear women and young girls be like, wow, that's awesome. You know, a dream that I have, I realize can be had. And they didn't know that before.